Okay, so Mr. Kevin H. had a great question. And so I wanted to answer that question. He had a question on, you know, what kind of service vehicles to use. He started up a new garage door business. And he was asking, basically, um, you know, how to haul the garage doors. And that, that's a great, great question. So with all my years and all my expertise, the bottom line, go with a service van if you can. Now, here's the thing. You have to, you have to keep this in one, one shoe doesn't fit all. That, that's the bottom line. In our demographic, I think he, well, he just said he was in Canada, so he's probably somewhere with snow. So you got to watch it. You got to look at your, you got to look at your surroundings. You got to look at the road conditions. Um, how good are your plow trucks, uh, you know, your DPWs and stuff like that around here, uh, with the technology nowadays, we get, um, they're, they're on the roads right away with all the advanced technology radar and the, the, the plow trucks have gotten more advanced. Now they got the wings on them. So they don't have to make two passes. They can make one. They get roads cleaned up really fast is what I'm getting at. So hands down with the vehicle, the service van has been phenomenal. I've tried pickup trucks, things I don't like with the pickup trucks is the fact that everything is up super high. I'm 5'9 five, five on a good day, and it is extremely hard by the time you get into a pickup truck, because typically the rear ends are higher due to the, the, the load capacity of them. Um, unless you get a two-wheel drive, you know, maybe it's set a little bit lower, but not that much. The ladder rack just gets it up so high. Um, so I particularly don't like ladder racks. I've had a lot of damage happen to garage doors, I've normally had to turn them into flat surfaces, but the problem is, is that that edge. When you get to the end of pulling that, that door off that rack is that edge. And if you get somebody that jerks on it all, you can kink the door and damage the door. And you know what I'm always saying? Callbacks cost you greenbacks. So I personally do not like pickup trucks for that reason. I've also had a pickup truck with an insert that I bought out of, I think it was Arizona, Cali, somewhere out of there. And it went into the back of your truck. Um, that the, the problem is in the back of a pickup truck, for me anyways, is everything turns into a vortex and it all gets sucked right out. <laughs> Gone. I had ladders back there. I've had garage door openers. I've had everything. In a van, I very rarely ever have anything fall out of a van. It's just because it's a, it's, it's a you know, it's a can and it's it doesn't have that vortex of wind blowing. So the vans have been hands down awesome. Now, if you need to step it up a little bit, I will show a picture here with the trailer. The trailer has worked phenomenal. I, I, built, I built this trailer uh, back when I first started my business. Um, I, I built it out of uh, materials that was laying around. I remember uh, Sam's Club, I think, was going, uh, they were switching their carts around. and They are getting rid of their little shelters. I think they were having problems with the wind catching them and blowing them and hitting customers' cars. So they were just scrapping them. So I ended up getting that scrap metal, and I, I built this trailer at one time with it. I had the axle, I think. I think I had to buy the tongue and maybe the, the taillights, and that was about it. The rest of it was just metal that I had laying around, and I, and I built it for, like, it was like $60. It was really cheap. Now it's been rebuilt. It's got a lot more money into it. I restructured it. I made it a little bit heavier duty. Um, so a trailer is a good option, too, but depending on where you're at. Sometimes with our area here, we can be out in the boonies, and then sometimes we can go into the city, and you're going down little, um, you know, little back, what do you call it, back alleys of houses. So the trailer takes up a lot of room. And the thing is, too, is that you have to consider is you have to always worry about employees. So if I was in your shoes and I was starting out and I'm looking eventually to maybe get a helper or something, you always, I always try to tell everybody, don't think about yourself, right? Sure, I know you're the man. I know you're great. I know you're awesome. But look at everybody else, their abilities. A lot of people that you're going to hire, not always, um, are not going to have the same abilities as maybe you. Maybe they don't know how to back up a trailer. I've had that happen. I've had some guys not know how to drive a stick shift manual uh, uh, vehicle. That's been a problem. I've had some people that don't know how to take corners with trailers. Um, there's all these variables. And, and then the problem is like with a pickup truck, if they don't strap that load down, and they just start cooking down the highway 70, 80 miles an hour. Whew, there goes that section. Big liability. Like I said, the vans have been proven to me. They work awesome. I like the fact that when I'm done with a job, depending on whatever's going on, 
sometimes you got to use the bathroom when you get to the end of a job and you don't want to go out to customers. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to go. I've had it before where it's the end of the day. I've had phone calls that have, have upset me. I've had uh, bathroom incidents. I've had it just at the end of the day. I've already done two jobs. I'm sweating. I'm hot. I'm miserable. I want to get the heck out of here. I've had it before. They got company coming over, uh, you, you know, for the customer. I've had it where I've wanted to go on vacation. I've done it all. And the van has always been great because you pick up the garbage, you shove it in there, and you can take care of it later. That's what I love about it. The pickup trucks, not so much. You normally have to strap it. You have to put some angle on it. You have to put your ladders on it, which now the ladders at Jeopardy, that that load goes, there goes your ladder. I literally had a ladder one time blow out of the back of a pickup truck going down the highway, and a car demolished it. Or it might have been a semi. I don't remember. The guy looked in his rear view mirror that was with me, and he says, don't turn around. And I couldn't turn around because now on our on our highways, they barricade it so you can't, uh, we got, what is it, cable on one side and the other side's woods. I don't know. But it it just it wasn't happening. And I wasn't, I, the, the exit to turn around in, in the, the traffic, oh. But those are the things that you got to think about when you're in that moment, you know, that's going to happen. And so, yeah, I know a lot of guys don't like driving the vans. They're, they're not as cool, you know. They're not as cool, man, you know. They're, they're all looking outside, you know. And like I said, the pickup trucks, maybe if you're in a, in a, like a warm climate most of the time, eh, not so bad. You know what I mean? I still don't like them because of the fact that stuff blows out. I don't like my stuff that I can just chuck in the back. I can shut the doors and it's good. It's safe. It's secure. It's out of the elements. I've had it where you have to load up in the middle. Um, you're so busy that you load up that night and maybe you leave the vehicle sit outside well you know the back doors and stuff like that sure it ain't great for them to get wet but normally i've never had a problem where it hurts them so i i put loads in there i put the openers up towards the middle or towards the front of the van they're sheltered they can they can take the rain you know well they can't take the rain but the the van will protect them from the rain so kevin congratulations on uh doing your you know starting your business there i hope it works out great uh just remember try to stay local don't expand too fast um, and, uh, make sure you're being profitable. Make sure you're watching your prices. And, uh, just remember just cause you're busy doesn't mean you're profitable. That's one thing I get all the time. People always say you're busy. And I always want to tell them I'm not busy. I'm profitable. You can be busy. You can sit there and do donuts. You can spin your wheels, but if you aren't collecting, collecting the money and being smart with it and being, um, just responsible, You'll, you'll just burn yourself out and you'll just turn into a, like, I'm done. <laughs> you'll just say, I'm done. So anyways, I hope that's helpful on the truck, a van, to a trailer. Enclosed trailers are nice too for certain jobs. But most time, if you get bigger jobs, which you're probably not if you're starting out, you're going to be doing resis. It's better to um, get them dropped off at the location too. That's always something that typically your vendor, if you got a good vendor and they're dropping doors off to you, they will deliver it to the location. So and I, I normally do an average of about three or more doors. And if they're bigger, eh, just have them delivered to the site. Even if you got to tarp them, um, prop them up a little bit so they don't get mud on them. If you can get them out of the way, you are taking the chance of theft and all that and then possibly getting damaged. But sometimes, you know, the logistics gets to be crazy. And then you start turning into a storage unit if you got a location or you're using your own garage or, or whatever on your own property. Or maybe you don't have the room. So anyways, I hope that's somewhat helpful. Kevin, thanks for the question. If you guys have any other ones, definitely don't uh, don't be afraid. Hit me up at my email, davedupson at gmail.com. Or uh, you can always leave a, well, if you leave a comment, I might not always see it. But I do try to go through most of them. So, anyways, hope you guys are doing good. Like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification, all that good stuff. Talk to you later, guys. See ya.